Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of The Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I am Jeffrey. I forgot Keith! Crap, where I'm just kidding. I didn't forget Keith. Just kidding. Uh, but we do have a really special guest with us today. Um, everybody give a big welcome to the man who knows all things boat, Dave Reynolds, everybody. Come on in, Dave. Thank uh, you. Thank I'm you. Not, for being... oh, you're welcome. I'm not that special. <laughs> you are. I'm if... just uh, cheap and available. It's like, hey, you. <laughs> we got on, something for you to do. Get out of your office. On a cold, like... on a cold Wednesday, you are yeah. the one I turn to. Absolutely. <laughs> Keith well, is not here. I'm thank the... you for uh, oh, being here with us. Not a problem. I know. Um, so, no Keith. Problem. We gotta. I gotta explain a little bit of what's going on with Keith. I don't want to put Keith's business really out into the street. But last week, we did show Keith's swollen face. He did give us permission to show that. But um, it's not all as rosy and peachy as it was. Um, it's a little more serious than yeah. we had originally thought. So everybody, yeah. please keep uh, Keith in your thoughts and your prayers. It wasn't um, an allergic reaction to peanut butter. It was not, not an allergic really reaction. But uh, he should be jumping on. He'll probably be on here in a little bit, and he can, uh, he'll can he maybe update us on that. But he is doing better as far as I've heard, um, but we do really appreciate him. We miss him, and Keith, get better soon, buddy. We miss you. Um, good. Now that the sad business is out of the way. Um, as well, you sad. Yeah, I'm here. No, <laughs> it is happy See, that you're here. I don't get any credit. Chop liver here. Yeah. I know. Well... I was just saying for all of you out there, you all know that Keith is so tall and that normally I have to stand on a box if we're ever going to be at the same height. But Dave is actually the same size, so it's so much easier for our camera people to... Uh... I'll be a guest more often. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, as usual, we are going to be taking questions. Um, because Dave is with us today, now is the perfect time to ask your boat questions. A lot of times people ask boat questions and uh, Keith and I are like... Uh... So now is your chance. Get those in. We are going to be asking those. I do have my trusty phone here with me. I will be getting to your questions, so get those in now. But before we get to that, uh, Dave, what's been going on? What's the haps in the boat world? What's the haps in the boat world? The haps well, in the boat let's world. let's see. You know, it's spring is slow to start in most uh, of the country. Don't you know, A lot of start. dealers are complaining about rain and snow and high water. So I tell you what. Boating it, business could be better. Uh, we just need, we need spring. No, we know? really do. Yeah. We were... Yesterday was really nice. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. I was like, finally, we're going to be able to get out onto the boat or at least shoot in the boat or something. But today, it's not It's not even the cold. It's the wind and the rain. It's well, I'm not complaining ridiculous. about it here. I love it because that means more snow in the mountains for skiing. I'm talking about the rest of the country. You know? Got it. It could rain here. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, I guess, I guess that's good for, for you. Good for you, Dave. Yeah. How has the skiing been been? You're a big it's been skier. Good. Yes, it's been good. Good. It's been a good year. Better yeah. than last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have um, last year. almost 500 inches maybe this year, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah I so think so. That's good. That's and what that means is water next year in the marshes, too. Oh, I heard, yeah. I heard on the news here where they're worried about it's going to melt that fast and flood everything this year. You think? always complain about something. It's either too little or too much, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course, naturally. What else is going on, though? We, uh, we were at a Catfish Conference just this last little bit. We do have uh, – XL's got that new Storm Cat. In fact, DJ and Bill Atkinson took it out on the water today. And um, – Have you 40, seen any pictures? They 49 say... miles an hour. Really? Yeah. they send you any pictures or anything? I have not any? seen anything yet. Oh, no. man. So that's it's a, running great. It's a that's a great running boat. That's a sweet boat. That's that that new uh, Spitfire Orange boat. Right. Yeah. Keep an eye on the uh, XL Facebook page for pictures of those. We're gonna. Well, I've I've slowly been dumping pictures just occasionally, waiting for the good ones to come in and show you all that. But um, really beautiful boat. Yeah, it's an awesome looking boat. And we'll right. be about ready to start taking orders. Our, oh. our rep Shane Stokes will be towing it through the Midwest and showing it to dealers. And Absolutely exciting. That's good. All right, I'm going to make a couple of shout-outs here. I've got Keith Snow on. Um, I've got Sid Thiessen. Hey, Sid, I'm sorry Keith isn't here to protect you and be nice to you, so it's just me. So I'm going to say mean things. Um, Rick is on with us from Michigan. Hey, Rick, good to see you. Rick, I still owe you a hat. Um, I'm, going to get, I'm going to get to that. I did remember to put the link on the top of the list, so all of you who win uh, this stuff, I've got some good stuff to give away. Click the link if I call you out. Um, and we'll get you some stuff out. But Rick, I do owe you something. So Rick, if you'll click that link. Um, Rick helped me convince J. Paul a couple weeks ago to wear a flat brimmed cap. Oh, he did. Uh, okay. Yes, Good. Sid got his wife Finally. involved and everybody, awesome. and we got we got him on. So hopefully, got uh, plenty of photos. Yes, I did. I did. I, right. I have video proof of that. Um, I've got Jonathan Rodriguez. Jonathan is um, Jonathan is our account manager at Red Olive. 
just down oh, yeah. the road. Right. Um, Jonathan and all of his team are absolutely incredible. The work that they are doing and all of the rest of you out there are watching are going to benefit from the work that he is doing. Um, he's really great. Jonathan, I owe you some stuff, but thank you for watching. Um, it's, uh, they're really awesome. All of those guys over there are amazing. Yeah, the websites, what else will they help they're, us They're with? doing websites. They're just going to help us really uh, continue our marketing, uh, making sure that we're doing stuff correctly. Yeah, it's to great keep, to, keep me great on my to have toes. them on our team. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're designed. Full they, agency of 20, 20 some employees. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're huge over of course there. course, you'll get credit for it all. Yeah. Well, naturally. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't hire them on. No, they're really great, though. We appreciate all the hard work. We did get to see a little bit of the new the website we're working on. Um, and it's beautiful, really, really beautiful. So keep your eyes open for that. There will be more to come. I don't have any kind of dates. Don't quote me on anything, but uh, that is coming. Something we've been working on for a while. We're excited about that. Um, I've got Mark Harrell on. Hey, Mark, Andrew, Quintana I've got on. Uh, Frank Williams is on. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Justin Eichterling. They're all being really nice to Keith, which normally I'm against being nice to Keith, but this time I guess, I guess it's okay. If there ever is a time. Just this time. Just this time. This one week, Keith. Yeah. It's your one week. If he survives. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's that's bad karma, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Oh. oh, man. That's a, yeah, watch out. I love you, Just Keith. kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, I've got a question here for you. I've got Andrew Quintana already. What's best for shallow, sticky mud? Um, I don't know if he's asking boat or motor in that. But I, we have two minds. In fact, you and I are very kind of different on this with, with the motors that we're running because we run, we run on the Salty Assassin. We've got a, a 50 or the mm -hmm. 5000, the HDR 5000, but you're running the uh, long tail. Yeah. Well, yeah, I run a long tail a lot and, you know, shallow, sticky mud. Yeah, with that sticky mud, that's kind of where we were at, at uh, Salt right, Creek the other, right. the other day. Sometimes you're better off. There's a, certain, a few situations where a long tail will shine and usually sticky mud, you know, where you don't have much play. Um, you know, long tail's probably going to be more advantageous. Um, oh, yeah. You were running circles around us. Right. But yeah, with literally, I did. Yep. I go out and wait for him for about five minutes, circle back. Hey, you guys okay? <laughs> oh, but yeah, see. there's quite a difference. Um, <laughs> Keith and I are working obviously, back Obviously, you know, the, the uh, long tail is not as uh, ergonomical as a HDR. You know, you can't run it like an outboard, sit down like an outboard. It requires you to manhandle it. But, um, but if you're hunting exclusively sh air, shallow areas, real sticky mud, real thick vegetation, and if you're going shorter distances, you know, the long tail would be ideal. Right, absolutely. Um, good, so I'm gonna pause this here because we're starting to get uh, lots of questions in. So before we do that, we just wanted to go over, since we've got the master of all things boat here, we're gonna talk a little bit about safety. We've got um, uh, fishing season coming uh, just right around the corner for us. If it would ever warm up, we could actually get out on the boat. Uh, but we just want to do a little reminder of some of the things that we have in our boat that are necessary and good to have either way. Um, so I've got I've got a lot of stuff. I've I've raided our boat and I pulled out some of the stuff. But first, oh, what's this? Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I just I knew you were gonna do that. Okay. What's just had to test. Just had to test it. Make sure. That's one thing you have to make sure things are functioning. <laughs> if you have a blow horn and it doesn't it, function, it does. You it no does good. you no good. Same with fire extinguisher. Watch the dates that they expire. Did that work? Um, we did find. I can't even hear now. I'm I'm totally rattled, Dave. Thank you. Um, no, we actually have done a little re bit of research for you all, and at the top of the uh, description, I put the link of a website that we really enjoy here. It looks like this. If I don't touch it, it looks like this, and it's got a map on there, and you can click your state. And it will give you a link to your state's safety guidelines and legal guidelines, everything you need for your boat. So that is americasboatingcourse.com. It's a really, really excellent little site. You just click on it. Down below, it gives you uh, the information, a link right to your spot, which is really helpful, I think. Um, and from there, that's where I found my perfect little checklist here of all the stuff that we are supposed to have. And I believe this is pretty universal. State to state may be a little bit different, for, but most of all, these are the things. So like Dave 
demonstrated to us early on. We do have to have an air horn or some kind of whistle device, some yeah, kind of whistle. noise maker. So if you have a dog whistle, that'll work. You know, on your call lanyard. Oh, really? I got checked. And right. Said, yeah, I have a dog whistle on my uh, lanyard. So perfect. You're good. See, there you go. Some kind of noise maker. Also, the fire extinguisher, very important. Um, if you're running any kind of other thing than a mud buddy, like, a, you know, some of those other motors, very important. Just kidding. Although, yeah, All sometimes of the mud buddy and Excel will go so fast, you'll need the fire extinguisher to right. take the flames off. Because it's, yeah, so, it's fast. so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Always important to have. Um, you have to have uh, propulsion, another means of propulsion. Um, this is about as fast as Dave's long tail. <laughs> <laughs> I go a little faster. You go a little, a little faster. Yeah. I guess it depends on who's Twice rolling, as fast, you know? that's true. Sure, sure. Um, in Utah, we are requi required to have a life jacket for every person in the boat. You are not, by law, required to wear it unless you are 12, under 12. and under. Um, but we, as a company, do uh, – it is important to us. Safety is a big thing, so we try to always wear our life jackets. Whether and your videos is probably more important to our lawyers. Yes, <laughs> for our lawyers, very Just important. to point out, though, there is a difference between a flotation device and a life jacket. And I was not aware of this up until recently, until last year. I believe Utah, there's a certain length of both, like – under 18 or 17, yes. um, this was adequate. And I got to the boat ramp last year, and I had you know, four seat cushions, uh -huh. no life jackets. Oh. And he wouldn't let me launch he my boat. He wouldn't let you launch your boat? No. Because these do not count. Those do not count. As a life jacket. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have news a... to me. So I don't know if they've changed the law, because I've been checked before, and that was adequate. So I guess the motto of that story is, check the yes. laws and you know unfortunately it could ruin uh, a day where you might have to absolutely turn around because uh, they, they will stop you and just a tip you know the dnr fishing game they could really care less about what you have in your boat if you see a parks and rec vehicle better be prepared because yeah. they're going to check you right absolutely um a lot of the verbiage that we're using these day or that the state is using is coast guard approved fitted life jackets which is probably the change that they've made with those flotation devices but you do have to have a flotation device i believe yeah, for any boat throwable this is a throw you have to have definition. a throwable right flotation device and it is for us it's it's certain length of boat it's recommended i believe i'm going to read this and just double check nope no, that was wrong. That was something. That was something else I was looking at. Okay, I thought there but, used to be a length of boat, but yeah, yeah I, thought, a lot I of thought there was. But um, so you have to study these. Yeah, but again, the moral of the story is check your local area and make sure that you are that you're legal because nothing will put a damper on your day faster than than not being able to to get out. All right. So um, besides that, we've got. Oh, we also have our light. You got to have um, warning lights. And we do have the light on our uh, on the salty, of course. That right. our big yeah. old front light. Actually, navigation lights. Navigation lights. Exactly. And um, for many of you with older boats, where you have the little portable nav lights, you have to make sure they have batteries. Yes. Because um, if it is dark and you're launching your boat and you don't have nav lights, they will not let you launch your boat. And they uh, typically opening day in Utah is where they'll where oh they'll yeah check. where they're waiting for you. Absolutely. So safety. We also have. Um, you know, you got to have your documentation. We've got all the stickers and our, uh, what is it, our registration in here. I just keep it in a, on a little sandwich bag. I keep it right in our uh, gun box there. Um, so besides that, Dave, what else do you keep in yours just to keep you, uh, you know, make sure that you're safe and uh, prepared? Let's see. Well, I keep a first aid kit. Yes. Very for, smart. Uh, two first aid kits. One that's more catered for a dog, more dog specific. Right. And then a regular first aid kit. Uh I keep uh, fireproof matches or lighter yeah. in the boat. Um, I do have a um, little blanket, um, you know, more I use for the dog if it's really cold, but yeah. it might come in handy. Um, you can use those uh, those little solar blankets too. They compact pretty small. Right, those um, foil ones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you should be prepared to possibly spend a night on the marsh. I, I've never had to yet, but I've come pretty close to come having to close. spend a night on the marsh. Right. And, uh, right. You should be 
equipped for that. Uh, yes. I throw a few energy bars in my boat. I always keep a mm -hmm. few bottles of water in the boat. Um, Absolutely. So us, we have right here, Keith put this together for us. This is just our regular toolbox right here. There are times when Keith will get a call out, if somebody's out on the motor, out on the water, and they'll be like, hey, I need to, you know, my boat won't start. And he'll be like, well, if you can do this and this, but they didn't bring any tools. They don't have any screwdrivers, any wrenches, or anything like that. He can't. He can't yeah. help you if you don't have tools to fix things. Good point. Tools and the little battery chargers come in handy too. They're very small, compact, and they don't cost much. Thirty, forty dollars, and that could be a lifesaver. Absolutely. The other really great tool is something that uh, BPS sells. It's called the Just In Case, and it's a really great tool. Um, it's a whole box, and it's got. Uh, throttle cables, spark plugs, all sorts of stuff to emergency repair that engine when you need. Really, really handy item. And that's on uh, the BPS website where you can find that. It's really, really handy. I really love it. Um, we, of course, have got our anchor that we always use, um, especially when we're out fishing. We'll throw that down. Um, I always carry an extra ratchet strap set. You know, when Dave's getting all crazy, I can strap him down to the boat. Um, I, of course, always take my dry bag. I carry a lot of camera equipment with me, so I always have my dry bag in, in that bag in case I need to hike out in the water a little further. Stuff like that. So that's kind of what, what we got, those basic uh, necessities. I want to hear from the rest of you, though, what you consider. Um, I mean, the safety, I mean, that's, that's law, all things by law, which is really excellent. But if you've got something else you want to re recommend to everybody that you love to keep in your boat that you found is very useful, um, send that in. Uh, we'd love to hear all of that. Cool. All right, I'm going to dive into some of these other questions. I did see Keith is on. Oh, he even said, Keith, uh, Keith Mitchell, blood clots in, in legs and lungs, alone with AFib, but still kicking. So right, that's, uh, that's Keith, everybody. Um, oh, yes. Uh, Matt Cow, I always wear my tether cord, but do you guys make a bracelet style to go around wrist? Tired of the cord tangling up from booking around wrist. That's a really great suggestion. Not something we have currently, but we always are looking for uh, new ideas. We do love those. Um, with the new boat, those new motors, we have moved that, uh, that uh, rip cord a little bit back so it doesn't tangle quite as much with those yeah, new handles. Yeah, and the safety switch you know, does, is designed to go around your wrist. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as a bracelet, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, here's an interesting question from Chris Sims. What bottom coating would you recommend to improve performance in the mud flats to prevent sticking to the hole and getting stuck? Well, there's a lot of aftermarket products available. Um, more commonly used on airboats. A lot of airboaters will uh -huh. put those on. And uh, I've had a few people ask on shallow water boats. Uh, we don't offer that at the plant, so it would be an after market uh but you know there's uh it's a like a polymer surface i think there's mm. frog spit i think there's gator glide gator glide yeah you know you could google it and usually you just brush it on so you have to get your boat up on a forklift obviously to get under your boat and uh, uh -huh. but yeah it'll make the uh, surface a lot slicker and uh, i'm sure it will improve performance you know we've never done tests to uh, certify how much faster you're gonna go but one uh, one tip, you have to be careful at the boat ramp because that boat will slide off your trailer bunks uh, much quicker if you have that gator glide or polymer surface on the bottom. Tap that brake a little too hard, right. a little vigorously. Send it right out to the water. Um, Joe Christensen, hey fellas, greetings from the snow goose field. Joe, Joe, we're trying to work here, man. We're trying to, we're trying to have ourselves a work day. You're just going to brag like that? That is... Not cool, man. You done any goose hunting this this season? You no, been able to I get out at all? Uh, no, on the spring hunt. No, but it's going on now. And, and uh, yeah, more southern Utah. Yeah, has a lot of a lot know, of birds. goose on yeah, It's yeah. on the flyway. A few up here north, but uh, it's pretty limited, hit or miss. Absolutely. Uh, Joe, send me some pictures if you get a chance. I want to see those. Uh, Michelle Webb is on. Hey, Michelle, it's good to see you. Um, hi, all. We filled out the Google form, but haven't heard anything. Um, we're gonna check on that. Um, sometimes it takes sometimes it takes us a little bit to get to, to get to those Michelle so those are coming never fear Michelle never fear um, let's see Sid glad you're getting better brother see people are st still being nice to Keith I, I don't approve um, let's, see. Uh, let's see what's the best placement for three people on an XL 1854 f86 having a hard time not pushing water uh, with a load 
So you've got three people in an 1854. Would you put people uh, up front on that or you keep them in the back? Well, it, dep it depends on the size of the people, obviously. Um, yeah, you sort of have to play with it. Um, um, typically, I would put probably people towards the front, one on either side of the boat. So you uh -huh. have the driver in back, um, two people towards the front of the boat, one on each side of the boat. Um, and, you know, that, that's probably as well balanced. Um, as you could get, you know, depending on your load too. Right. With, if you got with, with decoys and decoys, gear, yeah. this time of the year, obviously, you don't have decoys. Yeah. But um, yeah, you have to sort of play around with it. Sometimes, uh, you know, what we, I use is a bird and buck seat. It's uh -huh. a little portable seat with a backrest, and uh, I think they're fifty. Maybe there might be sixty dollars now, max per wings. But the beauty of that is you can have your passengers sit on that seat, and you can reposition them anywhere. You know, if you're running and you're, you know, your boat's tilting to one side, you could uh, move your passenger with that burden buck seat. They could sit anywhere in the boat to adjust to the load. Right. Very nice. Um, those seats are great. Yeah. I really like that seat. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, Frank Williams, how often would you recoat the hydroglide on the bottom of the boat? Oh, uh, that's a tough question. You know, it's like uh, asking how often do you replace a prop. You know, it depends on the use. Um, yeah, you know, if you're hunting in areas where there's sand or grit, obviously it's going to wear it off quick. Or ice. Ice will chew it off yeah, really ice quickly. Will, yeah, chip it. Yeah. But I mean, you just look at the bottom boat and see visually. I mean, if it's peeling out, you'll you'll see if it's peeling off. You'll right. you'll know uh, when you have to re recoat it. Unlike a prop, a prop sometimes is hard because props sometimes wear evenly. And yeah. you look at the problem. Oh, this yeah, problem. Like, oh, it looks fine. Bad. Yeah, so you compare it to a new one, and then yeah, you can like, see oh, the difference. This is totally different. Um, Bryce Evans, do you guys offer live wells in the XL duck boats? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have an optional live well in the mm -hmm. uh, F4. Yeah, the F4 EIP. Um, it's a uh, box. It uh, it's behind the gun box, and I think it's it's probably about 14, 15 gallons. Yeah, and that could be plumbed. For a live well, which we do at the plant. Right. So, what's the best way if they wanted to aftermarket add that? What would be the best process? It oh, is difficult. Call. Yeah, it, it is. is It'd be a little, yeah. little harder. Yeah, I'd suggest a dealer install okay. it. They could order the plumbing from us. Got it. And get instructions from our plant. Okay. Excellent. So, dealer, your your closest dealer. Uh, if you're looking for a dealer, go on to the website or right here on Facebook on the right hand side. On this list, you'll see dealer listed right there on one of those tabs. Click that, put in your zip code, and it will find you your closest dealer. Uh, that's a good question, Bryce. Really good question. In fact, Bryce, for you, I've got this ducks hat for you. Click the link up top, and we'll get that sent off to you. That's a that's a good question. Those those live wells are handy, handy to have. Um, okay, again, it's kind of the same. Mark Harrell, what would you recommend for a good bottom coat for vegetation and mud not sticking? Again, those polymer uh, coatings. Um, yeah, you could Google. I know there's Frog Spit. Uh, there's, uh, I think there's another product called Gator Glide. There's a lot of aftermarket. They're popular in Florida. Yeah, really po popular. Very popular with air boaters. Not so much with mud boats. In fact, uh, I think maybe eight years ago we put some on a on a couple boats at the oh, plant yeah. um, just to try them out. We, like I said, it's hard to tell a difference in performance. I'm I'm sure they glide a lot better, mm -hmm. but. You know, really, the standard F4, you got that slick bottom. Um, you know, there's no interference. You don't have crimps or any runners on the bottom of the boat. So, um, yeah, it's hard to beat just the standard F4. But if you want to just notch the performance up a little, especially in thick vegetation, you know, it's right. pretty easy to apply that coating. Absolutely. Um, Jonathan Hall, where is your flat bill? I, I didn't put it on today. I gave it to Jay Paul. I made Jay Paul wear it, and I never got it back. He's so hooked, He's hooked now, right? He's hooked that's, now. That's he just he loves wears. him so much. Yeah. Everybody, if you get a chance to see Jay Paul, just tell him how much, he, how good he looks in that flat brim and that he should definitely, definitely continue to wear that always. Um, okay, Andrew Quintana, what boat do you recommend with 18 inches of ice on the lake and 56 inches of snow for the year. I oh, recommend, uh, you ever see those little houses, <laughs> yes. like ice shanties? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's that's what I recommend. Uh, yeah, a ice, boat with, ice big, shanty. Uh, with big treads yes. on it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Boy, 18 inches of ice. Winter. 18 Gosh. inches. You could drive a semi out on that. Yeah, you could. 
That's brutal. Yeah. Brutal, man. Um, <laughs> sit these in airboats. He, 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 he. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, you take, I, I've, I haven't done it, but I've had buddies that have taken an airboat out ice fishing. Really? Yeah. Oh, I guess you could. Yeah, you put it on the ice. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That would be interesting. Now, I wanna... providing there's not a lot of snow, if it's just clean ice, right? Yeah, if it's clean ice, will, uh, scoot on the if ice. If anybody out there has done that, I want I want to hear about it. Please send me that little story. Airboating out on a on a frozen lake, pictures, stories, send that in. That that would be really interesting. Um. Oh, we've got Travis on as well. Travis uh, Travis is helping with uh, questions. Uh, it looks like they've already got the Gator Glide. They're answering a lot of these, which is really awesome. Uh, so I'm just kind of scrolling through. I think you're right. I think the throwable while he's doing is. Doing that, don't forget to like and share. Yes, like and share, everybody. See, you, you're already taking over for Keith. Gosh, Sorry, this, Keith. This guy. You're Keith, out of a job. Keith, you're done. Just stay home, Keith. Just kidding. Don't stay home, Keith. Just you get back. You get, you come back for right now. Um, Jackson Hill did did say. I think you're right. The, the throwable is length regulated for Utah. I think you're right. I think it's anything under a 16 foot boat has to have a throwable. Right. I think anything is what above, it is. Yeah, anything above, above is recommended. Jacket, yeah, right. so, something like that. But I think yeah. you're right, Jackson. Casey Brady, keep an extra prop and a prop nut just in case of the spinoff. That is a really, really good idea. Keeping an extra prop in the boat, always helpful. Um, yes, Chris Sims bug spray, really, really yes. smart to have in the boat. Which goes along with mine that I was gonna say is that I always keep suntan lotion in my in my boat because. Uh, of experience. He's always uh, working on his hand. <laughs> you, you know me. Uh, I bug spray, that up is a well. good one because that could ruin an outing without oh, man. bug spray. Especially out when you're in the marsh. Well, especially with kids. Oh, I don't know what it is about kids, but mosquitoes just <laughs> love kids. Our kids could get eaten alive and I don't get one bite. Yeah, you know? that, that is a thing too. That's really smart. Really smart. And there's nothing where, I mean, you'll never get your kids back out again. They have a bad experience. Um, uh, Andy Johnson. Johnston, extra key and an extra kill switch yes, lanyard. I Always have an idea. extra key and kill switch. Yeah, good. Yeah, that that, that good. would make you use that uh, that oar. Yes. Drop that key over the side. Um, push pull and relays. Really, really smart to have. Travis Madden, spare boat plugs. Also a really, really good yeah, idea to have. That's good. I do have those in my boat too. We There's also, yeah, that, we've got yeah, a couple of those. That is, that is good to have. I actually have nightmares about forgetting boat plugs. About getting there and just sinking that boat. Trying to run the bilge the whole time, trying this to keep it. Or even worse, putting the boat in the ramp yeah. and without plugs. That's without probably plugs. Probably happened to oh all of us. Gosh. Ooh, bug spray. It's never happened to me. No, of course. course. No, never never happened happen to you. No. Justin Eichterling, um, XL 1761. What is the thickest ice I should think about breaking? Oh, you know, a couple inches, I would say. I mean, um, you know, it definitely. You know, you'd probably want the one, two, five, fifty, eighty-six. Oh yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing some serious ice breaking, but uh, you know, a couple inches fairly easily. Anything thicker than that, you could break it, but it's a slow process. You have to motor up on the ice, break uh -huh. it down, break it motor down. up, break it down. But uh, you know, a couple inches, you could probably break it. I mean, you could break it at a pretty decent clip. Right. But, yeah, thicker than that. I mean, the general rule was, I know when I lived in Michigan, they were saying three inches of ice you could drive a car on. So I'd, or maybe I'm wrong. But I, yeah, I about, about that, that was, three or four yeah, inches. Yeah, yeah three or four you, inches. You, so that's pretty strong. That's you don't some want to thick go ice. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Justin, uh, that's a great question. I like that question. I have got a, a Tangle Free hat for you. In fact, this is my new favorite hat. I really like that one. That's from Tangle Free. Click the link above. I'm going to get that off to you as soon as possible. Um, Drake Modonk, extra relays and trim switches, yes. Um, I got Luke Blanco on. What up, what up, what up? I feel like, Luke, for that question, you need a, a flat brim hat for that. That's uh, Extra shotgun ooh. shells is one. I oh, yeah, extra shotgun shells. Zip lock baggy with about 10 extra shells because nothing's worse than if you go out there and you can't get <laughs> shit all day long and you run out of ammo. Especially At least if you'll have Keith. 10 more chances. You know? <laughs> uh, I, that Keith knows more about that than anybody. Just running out of shells because he's just out there firing away. Firing away. Uh, so out of the side lights outside of the duck boats, I don't think it can only be seen on the side of the boat. 
Um, Mark, I will get back to you on that question that you were uh, something about the the lights and uh, shining out to the side and stuff. That's uh, that's something I'm gonna have to check on. So I will get back to you, Mark, on that question. Um, push pulls uh, from car from Carlos Carter. Uh, that's a smart one. It's referring to the shark eyes. Okay, let's see who we got. Uh, oh, James McDowell waiting for the catfish to become available in Michigan. Actually, we have a dealer, Fenton, Michigan, that has one on order. And, really? Uh, he may have a cat, a storm cat there, one of our demo really? models. Really? But yeah, I just looked at our production schedule. His boat is ready. So, Freeway um, Sports Center in Fenton, they're right off of 23. Well, they, you, they have a 23 storm cap. There you go, James. There is no excuse for you now. Get over there and get that. Um, oh, Corbin, Glade has done airboat on the ice. Of course he has. I should have yeah. thought of that. Of course Glade probably has. I'm going to have to talk to him about that and see what his experience was like. That does not surprise me at all. Um, let's see. Give me an extra pair of sunglasses in the boat. Really smart. Um, Rowdy Dito, I, I like that a lot. Rowdy, I've got uh, I've got a Mud Buddy Sitka hat for you. Uh, click that link at the top. I'm gonna get that off to you as soon as possible. Um, Blake Overturf, I bought a Mud Buddy about two weeks ago and I love it. Awesome. Awesome, right. congrats. Welcome to the family, that's exciting. Really exciting, send me some pictures, man. I love to see them, I really appreciate it. Uh, we use Airboat for ice fishing all the time in Illinois. It's the only thing we use the airboat for. <laughs> That's right. John Binninger. That's great. John, send me some pictures immediately. I want to see. you got to have some pictures of that. That's awesome. That is great. It is fun. Um, Be careful. No brakes on those airboats. But, uh, yeah, you do them pretty uh, fast. On. Yeah, when do you... Uh, I just sort of slow down. Yeah, I guess you just kind of turn it off and yep. coast to a stop. Yep. Sounds good to me. I'm ready. Um, carry electrical tape. I had my kill switch break and just wrapped the electrical tape around the kill switch to get me back on the dock. Very smart. Um, throwable knees on any boat 16 and over in Utah. Under 16 okay. is strongly recommended. Sorry, we had that just backwards. All right. Thank you, Travis. Um, for all of you, big shout out to Travis who was helping us out today. Who He was on last week and brought in uh, um, some of the this, this soft, soft cover stuff oh, like yeah. that. So okay. we got a new cover Great. for Great. the Salty and some of that other stuff. Yeah, that really awesome gun sleeve that he showed us that he put an oar in oh, yeah, and all sorts of, of yeah, yeah hooks, hooks yeah. right onto the side yeah. of the boat yeah. Yeah. really really handy. cool um and that's all for those of you who didn't see that that's last week's episode um tons of cool stuff on the bps website you can check out and get um what is the thickest aluminum you offer for your boats that is a point one, well actually in duck boats point one two five fifty eighty six however our bay boats our Stormcat, I'll use a .160. And uh, the, to my knowledge, uh, very few boat companies, aside from custom-made boats in the Northwest, use aluminum that thick. So all of our bigger boats, bay boats, are standard with .160. Absolutely. That's pretty thick. Yeah, strong boats. Um, shotgun shells. Some black electrical tape and boat plugs, yes. I follow the Utah DNR boat checklist, but have added fuses, switches, and a small toolkit. Jackson, very smart. Um, okay, let's see here. Rowdy, me and my buddy broke three inches, no problem, with their F-86. All right. Been years ago, but still mm -hmm. walked through it, no problem. All right. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. And that is, a, yep, the heavier. That is that heavier gauge. So. That's what the, the salty is that, but we, yeah. I don't think we've broken anything that thick i think about an inch or so is all that we've we've done this last yeah, year that's impressive that's that's not easy yeah okay mr heater torpedo heater for wisconsin drivers yeah of course you freeze out there driving um what are the push poles made of from caleb tidwell they... well um i have one it's uh aluminum, aluminum? Uh -huh. and it has uh the aluminum um duck bill and actually i have to tell a story about that because i've had this push pull this is now well, it's a couple of years ago i had this in my boat for probably 14 years this uh -huh. push pull. right never used it never used it and uh <laughs> finally i was out this opening day youth hunt and i blew a fuse uh -huh. on the motor and um took out the old trusty push pull and <clears throat> got a couple times going and busted it <laughs> 
I guess a little <laughs> screw that holds on that right. foot busted. So jeez. Oh, Fourteen years had you finally had to use <laughs> finally it. Finally used it the one time. And busted it. And busted. Almost immediately. Now I got a big old pin on it, so there's no way it's gonna break. But um, smart. So that's something to check for those and, of you with Yeah, push if you pull. don't use it often, check the uh, yeah, that little uh uh-huh. screw or pin. Make sure it's uh, secure. Very smart. That was not fun. It does not work good without the duck foot. You don't get much propulsion. <laughs> you don't with get just a lot a of stick. propulsion. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Dan Scoville, this is my new favorite question. Um, mud motor on a pontoon boat, has that been done yet? Yes. <gasps> it has? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, we've, we've uh, put, well, we haven't put it, but we've had customers buy mud motors for pontoon boats, DV boats, you know, little skiffs. I mean, you name it. I think a mud buddy motor has gone on pretty gone much Gone on pretty any, much everything. Yeah, everything. Probably even... Uh, a, a wood pallet, you know, who knows? But, yeah, pretty much everything that floats, oh, uh, you know, at I feel one like... time a Mud Buddy motor has been put on them. So, yes, All pontoons, because right. we have some guys that, yeah, they use, they hunt out of their pontoons, pontoon blinds. Sure. Oh, I guess so. I guess that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Keith was just out on a pontoon. Right. I, well, I, didn't, I don't know if that had a Mud Buddy on it or not. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, Let's see, who was it? Uh, Dan Scoville, I have got a Mud Buddy HDR t-shirt for you for that question. Um, this one right here, if you will um, click the link above, I'm going to get that sent off to you. I do have one more thing to give away. I'm going to give away this sweatshirt. I had, I had to just throw it on real quick because it's freezing out it's here. It's cold right now to take it off. I know. It's, I don't, no, no, no. I'll wait. I'll wait until the camera is turned off. Um, but it's a medium. So the first person who needs a medium, just post here. and I'm going to give a medium out to whoever, uh, whoever needs it. I really, um, his his body odor isn't that bad. No, I'm, I'm, I can, I'm clean today. He's clean. <laughs> um, but that... <laughs> thanks, Dave. That's, sure. I really appreciate that. Well, I just want to comment that. Yeah, it's, it's clean. It's my shirt. It, it's, it, <laughs> like it's a stinky one that Jeff wore. You know, for, yeah, uh, <clears throat> no, it's it's worth more. I mean, this yes, is, this is valuable is. now. Signature. You now that sign it's, it? Uh, you should probably sign it. Yeah, I, <laughs> somebody wants a big old... Very nice. Oh, we got it right there. Mark Harrell got it. Awesome, Mark. Good for you. You are the man. I'm going to get you... I'm going to whip this off and send it <laughs> behind the camera. Um, very good. Okay, so that's about it. Um, any parting shots that we... Oh, you, one thing I didn't talk about um, earlier on is that we've got... Uh, you are the new full-time host along with J. Paul Jackson for the uh, On The X podcast. Wow. How's that All been? Right. How's that been going? I feel special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ambry gave me a microphone. I mean, that's, that's right. A big time. You're fully geared out yeah. these days. Yeah, I feel like you know Howard Stern or somebody oh. now. <laughs> Howard Stern, huh? I mean, well, uh, yeah, I can't I, think I of guess. any. Other I know. I'm trying to think if there's big some other DJs, reference. Uh, Wolfman Jack, maybe. Wolfman uh, Jack, Casey yeah, Kasem. Casey I don't know. Kasem, Something maybe. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I'm we're in the same group. Not quite <laughs> the same group. See, there. you're an expert in all things. Yes. It's good. See, you're highly desirable these days. You're wanted. You're a wanted personality. Wanted so if you haven't checked that out, definitely go and follow us there. Um, you can pick that up um, on Podbean or iTunes or wherever else you get your podcast. It is there. It's called the On The X. The XL Boats On The X podcast powered by Mud Buddy Motor. That's hosted by uh, J. Paul Jackson, Dave Reynolds, and myself. Nowadays, I show up a lot more than I used to, which is exciting. So, um there's really no reason to miss us. We're we're out and about. We're we're here wherever you want us. Uh, just can't get enough. But uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching again. Uh, Keith, buddy, we miss you. We're excited to have you back. Hopefully next week we will see you um, here with us. Um, we'll try not to wear him out. We can row we'll the boat chair. <laughs> we'll get a chair for him. We'll let him sit. A lazy boy. Oh, oh my God. There you go. We'll get that nice. Awesome. Uh, but yes, thank you again so much, everybody, for watching. Um, and we will be right here next week. Same bad time, same bad channel, right here in the shallow bar. Thanks, everybody.